Hey guys, Film Recaps here, and today we're covering a 2022 horror mystery movie called Scream. The opening scene shows Tara Carpenter, a teenager, in her apartment kitchen chatting with her friend on the phone. Another call comes in but she denies the call so she can continue chatting with her friend. The phone rings again as she uses her inhaler. This time, Tara picks up. A male voice who identifies himself as Charlie asks for Christina. Tara tells him Christina is not in but she can take a message. Charles tells Tara that he and Christina attend the same group and Christina talks about Tara a lot. He further added that Christina mentioned Tara loves scary movies. He asks what her favorite scary movie is. She replied, The Babadook. Charles asks her if she has seen the movie, Stab. Tara says she hasn't really seen it. Charles then narrates how the movie started with a girl alone in the house. The girl picks a call and talks to the killer who asks her if she would like to play a game. Charles then asks Tara the same question. Would you like to play a game? Tara hangs up the call immediately and locks her doors. The phone rings again and Amber who Tara has been chatting with tells her to pick up the call. Tara gets terrified and asks if this is Amber, the reply was no. Tara picks up the ringing phone and the caller shows her a video of Amber in her room. He threatens to kill her unless Tara cooperates and plays the game. Charles asks a question about the old stab movie. Tara got the question right. He asks the second question which she answers again correctly. Moving to the third question, Tara answers with the F-word and pulls out the answer from the internet. She answers correctly again, he asks her the final question, Tara answers confidently thinking she was right but she got the answer wrong. Charles threatens to kill Amber but Tara rushes to get to Amber's place. Opening the door, she comes face to face with a man in a ghost face mask who punctures her with a blade. Tara runs and manages to lock the doors. Unfortunately, it keeps opening remotely. Just then, the phone rings again. When Tara picks up, she is attacked from behind. She struggles vigorously. As the assailant was about to eliminate her, the scene cuts. Up next, Sam Carpenter, who is Tara's older sister, gets a message from Wes Hicks Tara's friend telling her to call him ASAP. Sam calls Wes and he informs her about Tara's condition. She asks if they know who did this, Wes replies by saying it was someone in a ghost face mask. Richie, who is Sam's boyfriend, volunteers to go with her. In school, Wes and his group is seen discussing under a tree. They discussed Ghostface being back. Just then, Vince who is Mindy's ex-boyfriend from last summer arrives in his car. Wes leaves to go see Tara in the hospital. Driving home to Woodsboro, Sam and Richie talk about the stab movie. Sam tells Richie this happens every decade, and the last it happened was 2011. Arriving at the hospital, Sam introduces Chad, Mindy, and the twins, Amber and Wes, to Richie. Sam asks after their mother. Tara replies she is in London for a conference. Sam then volunteers to stay the night with Tara. Later on, the group leaves the room with Sam and Tara inside. In a bar, the group talks about Tara's family. Just then, Vince comes over but he is challenged by Chad and asked to leave. While taking a piss outside the bar, Vince is attacked by Ghostface. Back in the hospital, Sam suddenly wakes up from a nightmare. She excuses herself to the restroom where she takes some pills. Raising her head, she sees a wounded man in a vision. Apparently, the man was named Billy Loomis. He asks her when she is going to tell Tara why this is happening. Later on, the phone rings. Sam picks it up and hears Ghostface on the other end. He attacks her from behind but she escapes. Further into that night, Sheriff Hicks is seen questioning Sam and Richie. She calls Sam outside and tells her to leave town as her presence produces more problems for the town. Sheriff Hicks then leaves afterward. After the sheriff leaves, Sam asks everybody to leave the room and explains to Tara how she found out her true father from one of the diaries her mother wrote when she was younger. Sam then tells Tara she went to challenge her mother about it but didn't know her dad was behind her. Sam states that was the night their father left after finding out the truth. Sarah adds she left town to protect Tara. Sam further explains to Tara that she knows who her real father is. As per her mother's dairy, her father's name is Billy Loomis. She believes Tara was attacked because of this fact. Tara shouts at her to get out. Outside the hospital, Sam asks Richie why he isn't freaked out about her dad being a serial killer. Richie doesn't seem phased and she tells him to leave. However, Richie refuses. Sam then tells Richie they need to go speak to an expert. Later on, Dewey Riley is seen in his apartment when Sam and Richie knock on the door telling him they just want to ask him a few questions. Inside the house, Dewey asks suspicious questions about Richie. This makes Richie a little uncomfortable. Dewey then gives them a hint to find the killer amongst the victim's groups of friends. Sam begs Dewey to help them but he refuses. Sydney, Dewey's friend, is seen pushing her baby's cart when she gets a call from Dewey. Dewey informs Sydney about the attacks and tells her to stay safe and no matter what she sees or hears, she shouldn't come home to Woodsboro. After hanging up, Dewey texts Gail, telling her Ghostface is back and she shouldn't come home either. 
Arriving at Chad's residence, Sam and Richie look back and see Dewey. Dewey tells them he's here to assist them temporarily on their investigation. Inside the house, all of Tara's friends are gathered and Sam explains to them she is Billy Loomis' daughter. The group tries to figure out the killer's pattern. Eventually, they find out that Sam is the star in the script the killer is writing. Shortly after, the group concludes that Sam was the Terminator. Sam gets angry at them and drives off. While driving, Sam sees Billy in her vision again and Billy challenges her to find the killer and eliminate him. He screams, no, and steps on the brakes. Afterward, Sheriff Hicks gets out of the house, leaving only Wes at home. While the sheriff is driving, she gets a call from Ghostface. He tells her he's planning to eliminate her son Wes. She begs him not to and calls the station to pull cops to her house. Arriving home and running to open the house door. All of a sudden, she is ambushed by Ghostface who eliminates her in front of the apartment. Wes finishes his business in the bathroom and enters the kitchen to prepare for their meal when he hears the squeaking on the door. He goes to the door to investigate and gets attacked by Ghostface who punctures him in the neck with a knife. Sam arrives at the scene but is denied access to the house by the deputy sheriff. She's about to leave when Gail approaches her. Gail, who is a journalist and also Dewey's ex-wife, sees Dewey and runs over to him. They have an emotional chat. In the next scene, Richie gets a call from Sam telling him about the turn of events. Just then, Sam sees the deputy in charge of Tara at the crime scene. She rushes with Dewey down to the hospital. Back in the hospital, Tara gets in her wheelchair when she hears a noise. Her phone rings while she's moving to the door. Outside the door, she sees the body of a deputy lying down. Just then, Richie comes in but is attacked by Ghostface. Richie's phone rings and Ghostface picks up asking Sam to choose between Richie and Tara. As he is about to eliminate Tara, Dewey and Sam arrive at the hospital room from the elevator. Meanwhile, Dewey shoots at Ghostface but he escapes. Then Ghostface ambushes them as they are about to leave the room. Dewey struggles with him and shoots him twice. They get in the elevator but Dewey goes back saying he has to shoot him in the head or else he'll come back. As he was about to finish off Ghostface, his phone rang, causing a distraction that helped Ghostface in eliminating him. Later on, Sam tells Gail about how sorry she is. Just then, Sydney arrives and hugs Gail. In her hospital bed, Sam promises Tara never to leave her again. Eventually, they decide to leave Woodsboro once and for all. At the hospital's entrance, Sam is stopped by Sydney and Gail. They ask for her help in getting rid of Ghostface. However, she refuses and drives away. Sydney then tells Gail that she attached a tracker on Sam's car. As Sam and Tara make their way out of town, Tara finds out she doesn't have her inhaler and decides to get an extra one at Amber's place which is en route out of town. At Amber's house, a memorial is being held for Wes. While the party goes on, Chad goes looking for Liv, his girlfriend, after their fight at the party earlier on. Unfortunately for Chad, Ghostface attacks him outside the house. Just then, the trio arrives at Amber's house to get the inhaler. They discharge all the teenagers from the party. Up next, Richie asks for some beer from Mindy and she tells him that the beer is in the basement. Just as Richie leaves for the basement, Liv enters the house ranting about how Chad denied her the experience of a sweet romance. Mindy asks about Chad from Liv. Liv responds by saying she doesn't know where he is. Before Liv leaves, she says some sinister words to Mindy and gives her a deadly look. In the next scene, Gail and Sydney are still driving when they notice that the tracker has stopped working. They put a call through to Sam telling her to get out of the house because she is in Stu Mocker's house where Sam's dad and Stu Billy Loomis's friend, killed everyone. She then adds that it might be the killer's plan to get her there. Later on, Mindy is seen watching the movie, Stab, when she gets attacked from behind by Ghostface. Thankfully, Sam gets there quick enough after hearing the sound of struggles and stops Ghostface from finishing Mindy off. Amber comes in and shouts at Sam asking what she did to Mindy. Richie also comes in from the basement asking Sam the same question. Just then, Liv comes running in with blood on her hands. Everyone suspects her till she cries out that she's found Chad. Amber replies to Liv by saying, I know, as she shoots Liv in the head. While shocked and stunned at the unfortunate turn of events, everybody runs as Tara distracts Amber. Next, Richie and Sam run down to the basement but Sam tries to go back upstairs for Tara. Richie stops her and reminds her that there are always two killers. With suspicion, Sam draws away from Richie with a knife in her hand. Richie begs Sam to drop the knife and suggests Tara might be the killer. Sam scoffs and runs upstairs. Meanwhile, Gail and Sydney arrive at the apartment, both of them armed with a firearm each. As the duo approach the doorstep, Amber runs out, shouting, he stabbed me. But, the duo gets suspicious and concludes it's a trap. Shortly after, Amber shoots Gail, and Sydney fires two shots at Amber as she runs back inside but she misses. With Gail down, Sydney enters the house alone. Up next, Sydney shouts for everyone to come outside to the living room, 
even if they are killers or they are innocent. Behind a locked door, Sam finds Tara all tied up as she is cutting the straps. She stops and looks at Tara with suspicion. Tara then begs Sam to cut her loose. Meanwhile, Sydney receives a call from Ghostface telling her they were the other Terminator. Sydney shoots every closed door. On getting to one of the doors, she fires a shot and Richie shouts from inside. Just then, Ghostface attacks Sydney from the side and throws her down the stairs. With the gun down and Sydney still trying to get up, she shouts for Richie to get the gun. Sam rushes in and picks up the gun but then Richie punctures her side with a knife while looking into her eyes. He brings out Tara's inhaler from his pocket letting us know that he planned everything. The two Terminators get Sam and Sydney to the kitchen while Amber goes to fetch Gail outside. Amber and Richie explain to Sam, Sydney, and Gail the purpose of what they are doing. Sydney tries to get a knife on the cabinet but she is punctured by Amber using a blade. Richie then tells Amber to go get Tara out of the closet. Getting there, Amber shouts that she can't find Tara there. Sam tells Richie she untied Tara. As Amber gets back to the kitchen, Tara attacks her with her walking stick, causing a distraction for Sam to disarm Richie. Amber struggles with Sydney and Gail in the kitchen while Richie follows the trail of blood from Sam's body. During the struggle in the kitchen, Amber gets hit by the hand sanitizer container with the contents spilling all over her. She's about to finish off Gail when Gail pushes her hard. Amber accidentally turns on the gas cooker. Gail picks up the gun and fires shots at Amber. She then falls face down onto the burner, getting engulfed by the fire. Richie and Sam engage in a fight. Richie picks up the gun and is about to finish off Sam when she picks up a knife and punctures Richie multiple times, leaving him to his demise. She picks up the gun and fires two shots at him ensuring he never comes back. Just then, Amber runs from the kitchen, screaming while holding a knife. She is shot by Tara who said, I still prefer the Babadook. Later that night, Tara, Chad, and Mindy are transported to the hospital in an ambulance with Sam accompanying Tara. The movie comes to an end as a journalist reports the event of the evening. Thanks for watching guys.